Hi friends, this is Sivaramakrishnan from Sincere Syndication. In the last video, we discussed about the silent mischief monger called inflation. It is very important and imperative to grow our hard-earned money at more than inflation rate in order to protect the value of corpus. If you haven't watched that video yet, please do, don't miss it. Shall we understand the concept, concept of inflation a little better? Take something that we have grown up with, amul butter, the taste of India, isn't it? In the year 2005, if you had 100 rupees in your pocket, you could have bought 6 packets of amul butter. 13 years forward in the year 2018, with the same 100 rupees note, you could have bought only 2 packets of amul butter, my friends. In the year 2030, the same 100 rupees note will fetch you not even 1 packet of amul butter. The cost of inflation in amul butter, taking it as an example of the entire consumption basket, is about 9% odd. That includes all your vegetables, look at your vegetables, fruits that you consume, and varied other consumables that you meet with on a day-to-day -day basis. The inflation rate in all these things stand at about 9%. Therefore, it's very important to invest wisely to grow your money at more than inflation rate. While we need to understand where to invest, it's more important to understand where not to invest. When you start from a place to go to a destination, you will reach the destination so long as you don't meet with any accident, isn't it? You don't, your journey should not get stopped midway. You should not go in a different direction. Financial accidents should be avoided likewise. What is that financial accident? It is any investment that is going to fetch you at less than inflation rate. It is any investment that is going to fetch you returns of less than inflation rate. That's financial accident. Please take a look at this chart. A substantial part of the household net worth of India is locked in assets that are growing at the inflation rate. right? And that includes this investment through insurance companies which are called the endowment our money back policies. My friends, in any country, be it in India and elsewhere, the endowment policies and money back policies or any such other policies would fetch you returns at about one percentage more than the prevailing interest rates in the economy. That is the risk free rate in the economy. In Indian context, the risk free rate in India is prescribed by RBI and that stands at four percentage. It's called repo rate. Why would you park your assets in an investment which is not going to fit you, even not even the inflation rate? Shall we look at some specific ideology for investments and how this endowment policies can fetch you returns towards achieving that purpose? In 2005, the cost of enrolling your sibling for an MBA course would have cost you about 5 lakhs. In the year 2018, the same MBA would have cost about 15 lakhs at an inflation rate of 10.7%. At the same pace, the cost of education is going to be about 52 lakhs in the year 2030. Right? Let's say you have parked rupees 15 lakhs in an endowment policy called the child's education policy. In the name of child's education policy, towards meeting the objective of education in the year 2030. Right? You have parked 15 lakhs then. Now, after the journey of 12 long years in the year 2030, you know where your hard-earned corpus is going to stand it? The money invested in endowment policy, that is the child's education policy, is going to fetch you an amount of 26.93 lakhs only, growing at a rate of 5%. While the cost of education is going to be 52 lakhs. That is a huge divide, isn't it? The gap is almost double of it. While it has fetched you only 26 lakhs, the cost of education is 52 lakhs. The gap is 26 lakhs, my friends. And that's the reason I am telling you that in whatever name it's called, endowment policies and money back policies, strict no. There are three kinds of insurance. 
One is endowment policy or money back policy. And number two is ULIPS. And number three is term life insurance policies. By no means we are discounting the need for life insurance. That's a basic necessity and that's a starting point of any financial planning. But having said that, if you're going to combine insurance with an investment into a single investment vehicle, you're not going to make the best of both. In fact, when you combine insurance and investment, you make the worst of both. It will not fetch you the adequate risk cover, nor is it going to fetch you the returns that you need in order to grow your corpus. Therefore, please separate your investment from insurance. Take a term insurance policy for the replacement value of the earning member of the family. Let's say I have two children and I have to educate my children. The cost of the education of my children is going to be about four to five crores when they're going to go for higher education. And my I don't want my wife to work if I'm not going to be there. And the cost of meeting my retirement needs is going to be about six crores. Then my replacement value is going to be four crores for education, six crores for retirement is going to be about 10 crores. I need a risk cover for 10 crores. At least you need to cover yourself for half of it, isn't it? If you're going to take an insurance policy or a bunch of insurance policy and pay premiums of rupees five lakhs per annum, as most of us do in India, pay premium of rupees 5 lakhs with an endowment policy for a period of 10 years and at the end of 25 years it's going to mature into corpus right you know the value of the corpus is going to be about 1.3 crores at a rate of 5 percentage returns of on investment and that's going to fetch you a cover of this 11 times of the amount invested that is the value of the premium what does it mean if the premium paid were to be 5 lakhs per annum, that's going to fetch you a cover of merely 55 lakhs. Is that sufficient? That's certainly not sufficient, isn't it? Now, option two for a wise investor, he's going to take an insurance cover for a value of rupees 5 crores. Let's say the man's age is 40. The cost that he's going to incur, that is the premium that he's going to pay, comes to an amount of 2 lakh 40 thousand rupees. Now investing 2,40,000 rupees annually for a period of 10 years is going to take cover for a period of 85 years. From the date of first day of payment, he has created an asset worth 5 crores, which is the value of an asset when he is not going to be there. The family is going to get the value of 5 crores when the insured is not there. Now when he is investing only 2,40,000 rupees, is going to save about 2,60,000 rupees per annum, isn't it? Because with the end of one policy, it's going to be about 5 lakhs. He's paying a premium of 5 lakhs. Instead of doing that, he's paying a premium of 2,40,000 only and saves 2,60,000 per annum. If this 2,60,000 rupees per annum is deployed in an appropriate investment, which can fetch about 11% returns, which is not difficult to achieve. 11% returns I reiterate. You know, how much of corpus is going to accumulate over a period of the same 25 years? This wise investor is going to end up with a corpus of 2.08 crores at the end of 25 years. Along with that, he's got a life cover of 5 crores. Mind it, my friends, with the endowment policy, the cover is going to be for a period of 25 years until the term of the policy. Here, with Term life insurance is going to be having a cover till the age of 85 years of age for a cover of 5 crores, while at the same time, end of 25 years, is going to accumulate a corpus of 2.08 crores, while it was only 1.3 crores over there with the endowment policy. Don't you see the difference? Along with higher corpus accumulation, is also got a substantially larger risk cover, and that too for a period of 45 years from the age of 40 till the age of 85 while the cover here is only till the age of 65. Does it make sense to go for endowment policy? Certainly not. Let me cite an example from my own family. A close relative of mine used to invest about 3,500 to 4,000 rupees in 1980s 
in, with, with endowment policy with one of the largest insurance companies in India. He used to say that I have, I'm parking a large corpus today in order to ensure that I'm going to fetch an amount equivalent to my family expenses post retirement. 2000, in 1980s, 3,500 rupees was sufficient to run a family life, isn't it? You can imagine that. Today, the fact remains that he is getting an amount of 5,000 rupees, which was perceived to be a big amount when he invested 3,500 in 1980s. But the amount that he is getting today is not sufficient even to meet his petrol expenses and mobile expenses. While the amount invested was sufficient to run his family those days, the return on the investment today that he is fetching is not sufficient to meet his paltry expenses on mobile and, and petrol. Why did this happen? It's because the endowment policy that he has invested in, which is called the pension policy, has fetched him returns of way below inflation rate. This is a financial accident. Therefore, please avoid this financial accident of investing in endowment policy or money back policies or even with ULIPS. Stay tuned to term life insurance and that's a very basic necessity or a hygiene factor in financial planning and cover yourself adequately for the replacement value of the earning member of the family and invest the rest of the amount in the most appropriate manner to grow your corpus at more than inflation rate. Watch out on subsequent videos as to where to invest your money. Until then, see you then. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please drop a like and you could subscribe to our video to ensure that you're going to be notified upon posting of the new video. Thank you.